back to my workshop. One of the things I like to do when I'm not working in my workshop is I do like to cook. However, I think it must be my sort of inner caveman or something like that because I do like cooking involving fire. <laughs> it, it, it makes it much more fun. And it, now, if you can do it using a structure that contains the fire that you've made and preferably with utensils you've made, <laughs> it's so much more fun. Now, I'm convinced the food tastes better if you do it that way. Um, others may choose to disagree, but that's their problem. I think it's blooming marvellous. So what I'm going to do now for the next couple of videos is I'm going to do some cooking videos. But this is cooking my way. So the first thing you need to do is first build something that you can do your cooking with. And that's what today's video is all about. So in this video, I'm going to make something which is it's based on a barbecue, uh, but it's not a barbecue. And all will become revealed as we go through the project. It's much more advanced than a barbecue. Uh, and if it works, it's going to be an awful lot more fun. So let's see how we get on. So we're going to start off with this pile of 25 millimeter angle iron. I'm not going to bore you with all the dimensions I go along and I'm not going to concentrate too much about how I do the welding. As I feel a book coming up, um, you need to buy the book and I need to pay for all these projects somehow. What I will say is these four pieces are going to be the legs. So two legs are two centimeters shorter than the other. And this is because we need to fit some wheels to the whole thing. Um, and you may see that I've just drilled a hole ready for the axle. So without boring you too much and without talking too much, I'm just going to quickly weld this lot together. So here we are, that's the first frame welded up. Took about 10 minutes. Um, I'll do exactly the same for the other side. Because the legs are unequal, um, it's always best to take your measurements from the top going down rather than trying to come up from the bottom, um, otherwise it goes terribly, terribly wrong. So we've now made the two side frames and I'm starting to assemble the frame properly. Now you'll notice that this is the short leg and you can tell it's the short leg because it's got a hole in the bottom just there. Now the reason I make a point of mentioning that is because on the short leg we have a piece of steel that goes across the bottom here. On the long leg, we're not going to have one here. Um, that bit's going to be missing, and there'll be a reason for that, which will be revealed later on. We won't get ahead of ourselves. So now I'm just going to weld in all the cross pieces which match up with the pieces here, ignoring the one here, and then that will make a four-sided frame. So there you are, that's the basic frame welded. Uh, took about 20 minutes so if you haven't got a welder uh, it is possible to actually bolt this whole thing together the next thing I'm going to do is I've got a steel plate which I'm going to make just to fill in this hole here because this is where the fire is going to be and then we've got a grill to make which is where you're actually going to put your meat Now do remember to wear eye goggles when you're doing this. As you're cutting little bits of steel come flying up at you. You might not look cool, but on the other hand you can still see afterwards. And that makes quite a difference. Now with the basic frame made, I can start to show you some of the differences I think between this and a standard garden barbecue. First of all, I've made a couple of these. Now we've still got to put panels around three sides in here so that all the fire down below comes upwards. Then this bit is going to be where you actually do your cooking, across here. And by having various different versions of this, you can cook in different ways. So this one here becomes the grill. I've now cut a pile of these um, 12 millimeter steel rods, and I'm going to weld those at 10 mil intervals all the way across. Now you might notice that these are a slightly different steel. Um, what I've used for these, this is what's referred to as bright mild steel, as opposed to normal mild steel, which is all the stuff the rest of it's made from. So I'm just going to set these at 10 millimeter intervals, weld them down to make a grid. That will then become the grill part, or the barbecue part, if you want to use it like that. So that's what our grill top actually looks like. Now it's been welded up. 
With this much steel in it, it becomes ridiculously heavy, but there's a good reason behind it. I was reading an academic paper a while ago about the differences between aluminium cookware and steel cookware. And aluminium, whilst it dissipates the heat beautifully that way, um, steel concentrates all the heat and then radiates it upwards. So not only do you then cook the stuff that's on here, but it also radiates heat up through the meat or whatever it is you're trying to cook. So it's a much better way of cooking. So now that we've done this bit, let's get on with the next bit. As you can see, we've now got the panels on the side, on the back and underneath as well. And that's now ready for a couple of coats of paint. Whilst I was cutting some steel plates, I cut this one here, which is 600 mil square. And I've marked 50 mil in from the side. So I end up with a 500 mil square in the centre. And I've got four little cuts up here. And what I'm going to do is bend this bit over. But you can see what I'm trying to achieve. So I shall do that on all four sides and then these ends bend round and then we'll rivet those into place. Well it's a bit more effort but you've got to say it does look a lot nicer doesn't it? I mean it's never going to be beautiful but it does look better. Um, so I'll just do that on all four corners. So this is the first way that you can use this. So with a fire underneath and we're using the grill, um, I can barbecue some sausages. I've got some vegetables in some tin foil and I'm cooking some onions in this frying pan. Um, one of my own build frying pans as it happens, which makes it even more fun. And I must admit, in about five minutes time, I'm rather looking forward to my dinner. Now we tried it for the first time last night and I must admit it worked very well. There's a lot of extra steel here, um, all of which heats up and then radiates heat up. So it makes much more efficient use of the fuel that we're using, which in this case, we're just using wood. It's bits of old pallets, so nothing very fancy, nothing sophisticated. But it radiates heat upwards um, and it helps to cook, it cooks meat particularly well. So I think this is going to work rather well. So why not come back and see the next video when we see what difference it makes putting a granite slab on the top here and I've made a, a cow to go over the top and then you can use it as an oven. In theory it's going to work, why not come back and have a look. Thanks for watching, bye bye.